how will we be judged? It is heartbreaking to know all this, but it is also our opportunity. We know what we can do. We can change the way we farm. We can change what we eat. We can change how we treat nature. Some of us have lots of choices, while some have none at all. Those with the most power have the most responsibility, and most of us can do something. So, what will you do? Um, nothing. I'm, I'm not going to do anything. I'm, just, I'm being totally honest with you, Greta. I'm not going to do anything at all about these problems that you have outlined. Hey, what is up, guys? So Matt Walsh, who is a right-wing figure, recently released a video that was responding to Greta Thunberg's animal rights activism. And I'm actually surprised because I hadn't seen anybody respond to this yet. So I decided, you know, whatever, I'll just do a response. One of you actually emailed me this video and just want to say that I really appreciate that. And if you guys ever see some complete anti-vegan nonsense online that you want me to respond to, feel free to email it to me or you can just DM me on Instagram. My handle is at lifting underscore vegan underscore logic. And before we go over this absolute genius, I just want to say that according to my analytics, about 40% of you aren't subscribed. So I mean, just what the f subscribe. I hope that was a good enough marketing pitch to get you to click that subscribe button. Let's get on with the genius. Greta Thunberg issued another proclamation condemning all of us for our selfishness. And she does this periodically. Periodically, I mean like three times a week. So it, this is a long one. It went on for like five minutes. Um, but we'll play a little bit of it. And, and this portion I thought was funny. Primarily just because she talks about the thoughts and feelings of fish and how we have to respect their thoughts and feelings. So Yeah, how funny is it that we should respect the thoughts and feelings of fish? Now, I don't know if fish have thoughts. I mean, that's hard to really prove. But regardless of if they have thoughts or not, we do know that they have feelings. So, I mean, how hilarious is it to just advocate that we care about the feelings of fish? I mean, I'm sure if Matt Walsh was a fish, He'd rather not be, you know, stabbed in the throat, right? But, you know, hey, caring about fish is just so funny. What an outrageous idea to just, you know, be concerned about stabbing fish. Let's listen. And finally, the animals. Every year we kill more than 60 billion animals, excluding fish, whose numbers are so great that we only measure their lives by weight. What about their thoughts and feelings? Some animals plan for the future, forge friendships that last for decades. They play, they help each other. They show signs of what we call empathy. But 70% of the animals we farm live inside factories. In the United States, that number is 99%. Their lives are short and terrible. How will we be judged? It is heartbreaking to know all this, but it is also our opportunity. We know what we can do. We can change the way we farm. We can change what we eat. We can change how we treat nature. Some of us have lots of choices, while some have none at all. Those with the most power have the most responsibility, and most of us can do something. So, what will you do? Um, nothing. I'm, I'm not going to do anything. I'm, just, I'm being totally honest with you. Greta, I'm not going to do anything at all about these problems that you have outlined. And I'm not even denying that some of them, you know, uh, in a perfect world, would I, if I were setting up my perfect world, would it include factory farming? No. What am I going to do about it? Nothing. Isn't that interesting? I mean, he just responds saying, yeah, there's all these issues here, but I'm gonna do absolutely nothing. Isn't it weird how veganism is just one of those issues where people get to just say these kinds of things and it's just totally okay. Like, oh, you know, there's this problem where, you know, trillions of animals are being exploited and murdered every year and they're suffering and they're dying. But you know what? I'm just gonna do nothing about that. Matt Walsh is extremely pro-life. I mean, imagine if somebody just went up to him and was like, yeah, um, I hear what you're saying about abortions, but I'm gonna do nothing about it rather than provide an argument for why we shouldn't do anything about it. Um, and part of that is, you know, you people have taken this on as your cause, but it, it's, and there's, it's, there are a lot of, 
you know, you, a lot of complaints, a lot of criticisms, but really short on solutions. So just saying we can change, let's change the way we eat. Let's change this and that. Well, in what way exactly? And you got to be real specific. Okay, so it's pretty clear what the solution to animal agriculture is. It's, you know, not putting in demand these products and, you know, providing alternatives like plant-based meats and, you know, the incoming lab-grown meat. I don't know if Matt Walsh has just taken zero time to look into what veganism is and what the potential solutions are to the, you know, animal agriculture base issues that we fight against, but it's a fairly simple solution. These companies exist because there is a demand for them. So if we remove the demand for them, they won't exist. And therefore convincing people to adopt a vegan lifestyle or one which, you know, excludes all of these animal products is the solution. So we, we, you know, we got a lot of people to feed in this country. 300 plus million, 330 million people. So this is how you can actually tell that a person has spent less than three seconds thinking about veganism. It's clear they don't understand that in order for these animals to be brought up to slaughter, they have to actually be fed in the first place. It's not like we just, you know, spawn these animals like NPCs in a video game and then they're automatically at slaughter weight. We have to actually grow crops to feed them. So the food is already there. It's actually more than just there. We have an excess amount of food that we're feeding to these animals. Now, the reason animal agriculture is such a joke when it comes to a sort of you know efficiency perspective is because if you decide to just eat plants instead you eat the plants directly whereas if you decide to eat the animals you have to grow the plants to feed the animals and then eat the animals and the feed to calorie derived from animal conversion rate is terrible it's actually one of the dumbest things we do as a species in my opinion i know it's not this simple but like just imagine you're sitting and there's a field in front of you that has a myriad of food and you could just go into that field and you know consume that food or you can take that food and put it in another animal that you also, by the way, bred into existence that didn't exist prior. Feed them that food, slaughter them, and then get like 10% of the calories back. Absolute genius. And uh, also, just so you know, uh, fish don't don't really have thoughts or feelings at all. Um, they're they're basically like biological machines. So you don't you don't have to worry too much about how the fish are feeling because they're not really feeling anything. They, they, don't, they don't have the neurological equipment for that. Yeah, so there's plenty of data to support fish feeling pain, so I'll leave that on the screen. But I'll say that even if the fish didn't feel pain, I mean, what about all the other animals that Greta mentioned? I mean, he obviously has no response to it. Honestly, eating animals is one of those things that it's just for some reason, it's so easy for people to just kind of be like, yeah. But really, when you think about what the process entails, just because it's farther away from you obviously doesn't change anything. I mean, it's still happening and you're still putting it into demand. And this is an issue that is deemed so trivial by the public, yet is so, you know, atrocious that people can just be like, yeah, I'm gonna do nothing about it and just go on with my life. Just imagine any other issue that people support that revolves around the suffering and death of sentient beings being viewed this way. Like, listen, I understand that it seems from an individual perspective, like what is my not consuming of animal products gonna do to the collective problem? I'm just one person. But this mentality is so toxic because if you have one person thinking this way, and then you start a trend of people who think this way, then you have an entire group of people thinking this way, and then overall nothing is done. Obviously, it's a good idea to promote individual consumer responsibility so that we have a myriad of consumers collectively taking a stand against an industry and then Altogether, they have an effect. It's like when someone says about voting, like, why would I vote? It's only one vote. Well, yeah, sure, it's only one vote, but if we promote this kind of mentality, then you have thousands and millions of people not voting, and that makes a big difference. The same thing applies to animal agriculture, but even still, it is true to say that your lack of consuming animals would contribute to a lower demand for the industry, which would lead to a lower supply, and supply in this case is animals. Anyway, guys, that is the end of the video. It's always really funny watching these people who are so passionate about pro-life and their other issues just hear about veganism and just be like yeah you know i'm just gonna brush it off who really cares when the degree of suffering and death that comes from animal agriculture and the things that veganism is fighting against is significantly more than whatever human problems they're fighting against anyway guys thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in the next video dude even vegans don't get your weird stupid wannabe sense of irony here w who is your audience nobody gets these dumb jokes dude even vegans don't get your weird, stupid